that nervous. I think that's a good thing. Okay, God, there's good. 59 minutes on the clock here. <laughs> All right, I'm starting. 59.48, 47. I got them tall. Six. I can't see the clock. I could just narrate the numbers. Welcome. I'm going to talk. Thank you. Welcome to Dubai Watch Week. Welcome to Click Clock. Today's debate topic is called To Be or Not To Be Spoke. And today we will talk about watch customizations and how respected members of the watch industry feel about them. My name is Barbara Palumbo. I will be your debate moderator today. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. For those not in attendance at Horology Forum in 2022, this is how the debate is going to go. I will ask a question of one of these two wonderful speakers who will have four minutes to answer the question. The opposing speaker will get three minutes to either cross-examine or make a rebuttal or a combination of both. The original speaker will then get two minutes to reply, and should the opposing speaker feel the need, they will get a final 60 seconds to solidify their opposing argument. I say that very lightly because these two guys are English, so there likely won't be a lot of arguing up here. We ask that the audience stay quiet as much as possible during the debate as the speakers have not been given the questions ahead of time and will need to thoroughly think through their answers. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce these two guys. Author, historian, journalist, GPHG jury president, YouTube sensation. Editor-in-chief of Vanity Fair on Time, making him my boss, thanks very much to my watch week. And one time Havana Man of the Year. Is there anything Nicholas Falks doesn't do well? A graduate of Oxford University, Mr. Falks is perhaps best known in the community for his books, Patek Philippe, The Authorized Biography, The Impossible Collection of Watches, Time Tamed, and Je Je Le Court, Reverso. We are thrilled to have Mr. Folks join us for this debate. He will be arguing the side of no customizations. Let's give him a round of applause. I'm <laughs> I've won already. <laughs> I, I think you have won already. It's like, how, how? Founder of Banford Watch Department, George Banford is no stranger to debate or disagreements. George began tinkering with watches from the time he received his first Breitling Navitimer at age 12. I did my research, baby. Yes, I do. He made a name for himself within the watch community for his customized timepieces. Recently, he partnered with Tag Heuer, rowing blazers, and Eric Wynn on a Carrera yacht timer, which George is actually wearing, thankfully, and has collaborated on watches in the past with Mr. Porter, designer Black Badger, and worldwide watch enthusiast group Red Bar. George will be defending the side of customizing watches. Please give George a round of applause. So we are about to start. I'm going to throw the first question to you, dear George, because you said you were more nervous. So. Oh, no, I really, really am nervous. <laughs> I'm like, my hand, I, oh my God. It's yeah. going to be fine. Guys, I, I'm right? Really, it's going to be good. I'm really kind of like, this is Nick. You, you see the introduction <laughs> of Nick, and then there's, oh, George. <laughs> it's kind of like... But they forgot I'm to say they could buy a used Australian off you and also... Oh, and my God, also don't get started on that first question and, and, with George. And also... And also a <laughs> oh. You were quoted in an article for the English cut as saying that conforming is boring, which is part of the reason you had the idea to customize a timepiece for yourself in the first place. Is this a characteristic you apply to other aspects of your life aside from watches, you know, cars... Uh, clothing, and if so, what would you say you most customize? Um, yes, so I, 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 saying conforming is boring, it's, it's more about being individuality or individual for yourself. And, you know, if I look at everyone here, they've got their own different style, they've got their own different way of wearing the watch or, or even strap hacking. And so for me, that's where I look on this. Yes, I do have other things in my world that I've, I've customized, of course I have. I've, cars, yes. I, I mean... I, jackets, I, like today jack we saw. Jackets, <laughs> no, but it's also the other thing. So I, I, I was very lucky. I did a project with Bentley um, a few years ago, and we did a full uh, Mulsanne, um, and we did a cashmere interior that was absolutely amazing because I found a, an article that the Queen used to have a, a cloth interior. So that was why. So for me, on everything, on everything in my life, I love... You know, if, if, if I 
have to you know, say, hey, you need customization. You need to have something individual in your life. I, I do. I mean, I, you know, just because I'm saying this, I've got music, <laughs> but I mean, even my headphones are customized. Because for me, I, I love the whole thing of just something that says, OK, I, I, it's a delight to see because I've, I've gone, oh, I like this, I like that, and that's where I sit on it. So that's kind of where I would, I would be on, on customization. Yes, I think it is something, you know, you look at how people do shoes or anything else in life. I mean, Nike ID is loving me at the moment because I keep on doing more and more Nikes because I'm just, that's my thing. But then, you know, you look at Nick, suit, personalized. It's, it's, it's Nick's style all in one suit. So, you know, same with this. It's, it's saying, this is what I want to project to the world. That's a great answer. Nick, you have three minutes to respond. I agree completely with what the other caller said. Yes! Uh, but, yes! But, 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 but that said, but that said, I think the, thing, the, about, I think, I think the thing about the fabric is interesting because um, it used to, I mean, she has West of England cloth in the back of the state yeah. Bentley. And it used to be that only the chauffeur would have leather because he would be outside in the Sedanka coupe and yeah. then the inside would be with the sort of, with the, um, the owner in, in cloth. Um, Customization, uh, I, have, I have many things made for me, um, but it's, it's, when it, it's when customization becomes the norm that I want to kind of avoid customization. Do you, do you see what I mean? I mean, I, I agree. I don't agree that normal is boring. I mean, I, I think that it's about, it's about appreciation of quality. Just a gimmick for the sake of being different for the sake of it is actually a pretty hollow and empty gesture. And I mean, what's interesting about what George does... So in other words, if everything is customized, then nothing is customized? Correct, because it's just all the same banality you're being sold. Oh, hey, I'm going to demonstrate my individual by having red soles on my shoes. And then suddenly, what do you know? He's got red soles on his shoes. Um, no, but I mean, I have... Well, I, I forget. I mean, I've got the color of whatever the pavement's picked up. But, um, but I, I mean, I think that... It's got to be done judiciously, and that's what's interesting about what George has done with his business, is that he started off as a sort of pirate, and um, he sort of, he's the sort of poacher turned gamekeeper in that he's actually become the official customized partner, and I think that that's the difference. I think it's to be done within the parameters of what... I mean, there are a lot of Cartier limited editions out there and personalized editions, but Cartier, in the end, has the say on what is Cartier and what isn't Cartier. And I think that that's when it gets a bit out of hand is when the brand has no say. So, you're, so why, buy, why buy a brand? I mean, why buy a beautiful Patek Philippe and then have Artisan de Genève take the dial off and skeletonize the movement for you? Why not buy something that actually, that's what they're about? Do you know what I mean? It's oh, a, yeah, that segues into my next question, which is gonna go to you, so. Oh, so we were answering all the questions at once. Have I had my three <laughs> minutes yet? <laughs> <laughs> I can carry on talking. No, no, no. You have, you have another 40 seconds. If really? Like. 41 yeah. seconds or 42 <laughs> seconds or 40, 40, 39 seconds? You can keep going or we can come um, back to George. George, George you'll you definitely want to come back on some of my points. Well, do you know, firstly, I'm wearing red soles on my shoes. So, I didn't know so, that. I'm blind. So thank you, Nick, for just kind of... Uh, but I, I look, I agree. And I think to myself on personalization and individuality, I think it is... You know, if I'm walking the walk and saying to people, I, I agree with actually making something that is a pleasure for you. And that's where I, I, you know, what I'm saying to you is like materials, the cloth, you know, the cloth of the interior, it was, uh, I, and you'll correct me, is it was all about not uh, making the clothes shiny, but it was also um, in the summer it was cold and in the winter it was hot. And it was this wonderful cloth interior on a car. And, and I'm, I'm harking to, a, to that, but it is also things like, you know, if you look at a watch, you, you look down at it on every day and it has to be that delight. It has to be something that makes you smile or, you know, or it becomes just an, 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 uh, an object that you don't kind of connect with. And then, these are totem poles. But what for, do you think about Nick's point of if everything became bespoke, then nothing is bespoke? I don't, I, I, yes and no, I, I, I think one side of me says to you, I totally agree with you about, but, I, but then I think to myself is most of my world, you know, at home or you, know, you do an interior design, it's, it's, it's your style, it's your, 
it's what you're projecting. Uh, you know, even automotive or, or watches or, or anything that is in, in your world, you want to just kind of have something that is, it projects you. So I, I, I would say yes, but then I would say to you is, I do buy limited editions. I do buy, you that's know... Very, that's very gracious of you, I think, to, oh, sort of, to bestow it. your patronage upon no, these limited but, no, editions. No, but what, I, what I'm saying to you is I, 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 I love when someone is doing something personalised or done their take on something. Okay. Then I think it's... Then, for me, is my world is not fully personalised. It's their take on the world. I, I love that. You know, like Nick's take on the world. I, I love... I love everything. You've, you've told, told those books. They're my Bibles. Yeah. They are my Bibles. So, so you know, gonna, the cigar, gonna, the, the... I'm going to let him have his one minute. I'll, I'll, that's, I'll jump That's out. part of the debate thing. Go I ahead. forgot. I'm so old, I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> right. But, well, but can... to, let's say that I agree totally with what George is saying, but with reservations. Um, oh, I mean, I, I think... Uh, uh, I, I mean... You could let a chimpanzee choose some custom things, but it probably wouldn't look as good as if George actually guided you through it. So I think that it needs to be done. I mean, I think the, the biggest crime is one of these things where you go in and there's a sort of selector, and you can select your own product, and it looks like something made by Homer Simpson. Do you remember when Homer Simpson made the perfect car? Yes. That was there's a yes. bit of everything. And I mean, that is like where customization gets you in the end, is the, is the Homer Simpson car. Nick, I love that and you're watching Homer Simpson. That's I, even I am, cooler. A master, I am a master, and I'll, quit, I'll speak to you in Latin in a minute. I'm a I master mean, of oh both the high and I'm, the low I'm, and the middle brow. That's what scares me. Now. Okay, well, the second question is going to go to you, Mr. Fox. Which watch model or models do you feel should never be customized as it would be sacrilegious to do so? Rolex. Um, Patek. Rexhep. I mean, all the good stuff, basically, because they know what they're doing. It's, it's, um, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's very difficult because people have custom Rolexes, but I think you've got to do it within in something. In, if you're buying a brand, which you are, and I mean, I think that's a good thing if you're buying a brand because it, you feel that it already speaks to you in a certain way. So why go out for a Chinese supper and say, I want to eat pizza, please? Do you, do you know what I mean? It's a bit like saying, could you customize this Chinese meal until it looks like and tastes like a pizza for me? Um, I wouldn't do that, unless it's a terrible Chinese restaurant and it needs help. And then I'd say, turn into an Italian restaurant because it'd be much better. And, you know, why do, why do spaghetti, why not do noodles, um, why do noodles, why not do spaghetti meatballs, you know? Is that your final say on that? I don't think it's an answer at all. And I don't okay. think it's even a point to be argued. Um, but... Uh, I think George could argue this. No, 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 George couldn't argue that. Sure he could. couldn't argue that. I, can't, I, I mean, I've, I've lost track of what I'm saying, but I think, but I, I think that it, nothing, nothing is sacred, and yet everything is sacred. George, I know oh, you feel differently, buddy. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, um, so Do we have a debate? This is what I want to Yeah, this is what you want. You want in the British debate that really, <laughs> I'm like, have you seen our politicians? I'm like, come on. Um, but look, um, what I would say on that side is um, I think the need for those, some of those brands on the personalization that happened and happens, I think it is about this um, difference. Because when you turn up with the same watch to, let, let's say this event, I've been looking at everyone's wrist. They've got some amazing watches on their wrist, different things, great straps, great, great. They've already hacked the watch already. And that for me is something I love about this individuality. You go, oh wow, I want to see that. But most of the brands, you know, Rex F is different, but most of the brands, You've seen it before. It's almost like, you know, I, I, I've watched a few people and they're just like, oh yeah, I've seen that. Walk on. You know, I saw an MBNF and I was just like, that is unreal. So for me, on something like that, personalization, I don't think, they're already offering it personalization, but you look at something like that or something like, I don't know, that, the, the new Piaget black tie. Personalization is already happening in that. That's giving someone an individuality. They had a personalizator or whatever in the 1960s. No, it, I mean, they, 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 they did that for women's watches. I mean, the thing with the, with the, I think, whichever one it was, was it the 9P, the very slim caliber, that enabled them to make the dials just thick enough so they could accommodate a hard stone dial on the top. And that's where that came from. So, I mean, it's, 
it's, it's within the parameters of the brand. The brand was making slim movements so precisely as they could have, they could cut the stone just thick enough so it wouldn't break to use it, uh, to put it on top, of, on top of the dial. So I mean, I think the nature of the brand opened itself up to this customization. So you give, you give the customer the illusion of choice whereas actually they're following your mandate for them. It's like God. You believe in God. I'm not sure, but, I, I probably, but even, even, even though he knows that I don't necessarily believe in him, that's kind of part of his plan. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's, it's, it's like living in the Truman Show mixed with the Matrix, basically. So going, uh, I'm going to go question 2A here. You heard him say, when I asked him, what brands shouldn't be touched? And he said Rolex. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a customized Rolex? Do I what? Do you have a customized Rolex? One that you customize for yourself? No, he doesn't. Uh, no, I, uh, no, he never customized Rolexes ever. Because I've read some things. Are yeah. you sure? No, you've, mis no, you've yeah. misread that. Oh, that's just, <laughs> um, that's just false, fake news. But, wait, 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 wait. But what I'm going to come back to Nick on is, if you think of the Arab dials, the the exactly crest, within the parameters of the brand. The I mean, brand, so Bahrain, Bahrain, and, yeah. the, and the and the and the putting the diamonds on the bracelet. Yeah, so, so they did personalization. So for me, it, individuality happened throughout the history of that brand. So then you say we shouldn't be looking at that. We shouldn't. They should. Okay. So then it's it's that scenario on that that other side of saying, hey, that's what people are wanting, or that's what I believe people want. We allow them. We allow them to. They know better than us. They're Rolex. They know better than us. Well, they know better brands than all are of big, us. Brands are bigger than the individual. But I, I would say is that's kind of yeah. I would. I, I would probably. Yeah, you're, they are. They know what they're they're doing. But they're also producing a product that has to be produced at the hundred percent that it's doing. But which is what's interesting about what you do is that you take that weight off the brand because you are an expert in customization. So I would feel safe in your hands because you've been mandated by Tag Heuer, for example, to run their personalization program because they understand that that's what you do and you do better than they can. And they, w and they, they, want to, they don't want to, they're making 700 or 600 or 400 or three watches a year or whatever it is. It's a big number. and They don't want to interrupt production for a limited series of 200 pieces. But it's, it's the same with the automotive industry, but you were totally right. But it's also time frame. You know, for, their, for any watch manufacturer, I, I, I don't know uh, some of the uh, uh, smaller or more independent brands, but it is a long period of time to do personalization. For us, it's six to eight weeks. Mm. And I'm not toting my time frame, but it, it is that type of scenario. But, you're, but you're, you're doing it for the modern world, because you mentioned training shoes. I, I, I have training shoes, but I don't have them bespoke. Per bespoke or personalized, but I presume that this is done within a framework that suits the kind of internet generation that it sort of delivered to you within a couple of weeks rather than two years. Yeah, six or eight weeks for me means that people are still thinking about it in their mind. They're still going, I can't wait for that product. I know, and that was the big, used to be the big beef about the trade fairs is you'd see stuff yeah. and then three years later it'd be launched and you'd feel the real sense of deja vu which is an argument in favor of customization. And I just realized I've got a customized, I've got a customized Royal Oak with, um, from about 25 years ago with, a, with my name um, chiseled out of the um, oscillating weight. Um, wow. I just remembered that. Yeah, but you, that's customization. You, you show well, me that. <laughs> I mean, wow. I am going to go ahead and, and get this third question asked uh, to you as well, Nick. So it's been proven the customizations, and I'll say bespoke, type of customizations not manufactured by the watch brand themselves can devalue a timepiece. But in your mind, are there any instances where a customization, again, not done by the brand, could add a tremendous amount of value down the road, such as at a future auction? That's about provenance. If Andy Warhol did it, it would be worth a lot of money. If I did it, it would be worth shit. <laughs> So, um, so, I mean, that, there's your answer. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that, that's an easy one. I, if, if, it's, if it's by somebody whose opinion you actually trust on these what matters... About if, what if it was by George? Yeah, of course, George. I love George. <laughs> and he's the official customizing too. partner for all sorts of brands and probably available to take on extra business if any of you in the audience want some customization <laughs> done on your brands. He's available later. I, I haven't got my business cards on me yet, but... I'll, this, I'll, I'll give you, you know. his details. Okay. Uh, uh, George, do you want to respond to this? We do, um, have, do have some time to let you Look, let I would say respond. to you is quite a lot of our pieces have come up or they've been coming up at um, different auctions. Um, I, I um, as I said to you, I had a, a little bit of an issue earlier this, uh, 
this week. Uh, we launched a watch and uh, it already went on eBay for a lot more money than what it was worth. Now that was the instant pop, that was the flippers idea. But at auction, watches, I, I, it is about the limited editions or the, these things with provenance of, uh, as Nick said, you know, I know that, you know, I look at something like this Ryan Blazer, we're not going to be doing this colorway ever again. We're not going to be, the, the team at Gazara that we did earlier this year with, with Tag Hoyer, we designed the whole thing, and uh, I'm not promoting myself, so my business card isn't in Allow my me to promote you, George. Okay. That was a work of genius. And I mean, what you did, what you do, also you animate, and we're talking about the automotive industry, End of lines. You animated the end of line. That um, what, which was which was the titanium watch you did a couple of years ago for the Aqua Racer. That was a that was the most beautiful iteration of the Aqua Racer, and it, to me it overshadowed the the new one. I mean, it 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 shows that shows the value that proper customization can bring because it's it's done in a way so it's like a kind of micro range within the range rather than I mean take take those slightly controversial swatches. If a plastic maker of watches had come out with something with Blancpain or Omega written on the dial, they would have had the legal department all over them. But because they do it within themselves, it becomes a thing. And so I'm not, I'm not saying that customization is a bad thing. I'm just saying that it needs, it needs you need guidance. I mean, there's a reason Guardrails. most people going into a tailor shop, they, they're shown a bit of cloth about, about, I don't know, this big. And they say, imagine, imagine a three-piece suit in that. And, and, and your, your mind goes off. I mean, I've had one or two suits made, so I probably know my way around a tailor's bunch. But often people say, what should I have? I said, well, how many, you know, how long have you got? You know, it's, it's, you're opening up a, a sort of Pandora's box and a can of worms and another cliche that demonstrates there's a lot of stuff inside there that could happen. And you need, you need a sort of guide. You need a Virgil or something like that to take you through it. Just so the audience knows, he referenced the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. Were you working with Tag Heuer? Just because I'm actually not sure. Uh, did you work with Tag Heuer on that, or was that something yes, you just yeah. did on your own? No, 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 no. So the so, Aqua Racer so, from, and, from a while and, ago. No, but the Monaco, the Carbon Monaco, oh. um, I, I worked. I was very, very lucky to be working with. I, I'm, there has been so many people that have introduced me to him. Jean-Claude Beaver, he is here. He is the absolute... Um, I mean, he is the god of, of the watches and, and someone that really, for me, I look up to. But Nick introduced me to him. And it was one of those things. The Monaco is the other one, so I can reference that. That, we should have done in bigger numbers. We should have done more of it, or it should have been a higher price point. But that was, you know, the, the point. But that piece now is, is going for more on, on, online, or was going for more. I haven't checked for a while. But what I would say to you is, um, yes, I, I've been working with Tag Heuer and Zenith for the last seven years or eight years. So, so. the watch is on your website now, the Zenith watch. That's all with their approval. Yes, and also um, I do, I do um, bespoke inside their own boutiques as well. Okay. And, and you do Gerard Perigo. Gerard and Perigo you do and Chopard. Bulgari, yeah. Chopard. There, it's probably there, quicker to list the ones you don't do, actually. No. <laughs> Patek it's, and Rolex. Rex um, and Rex <laughs> The rest? Rex But that's amazing. That, anyway. Oh, I think, we've, I think we've made the point that Rex Epps is pretty good at what he's doing. Yes, oh, yeah. That's pretty much Hell so. Yeah. All right, well, George, this, uh, this next question is going to go to you, I'm actually. scared. Please. Uh, what watch model would you consider to be your holy grail if you could get your hands on it to customize? And how exactly would you change it? I'm trying to see if George Kern's in the building. Um, <laughs> uh, Brighton and Avatime. Um, and the reason why I'd say that to you is because... It was the first ever watch that I took to pieces when I was a little kid. Um, and my parents, um, what would I best describe it? My parents um, uh, gave it to me because they knew it would take up a bit of time for me to kind of take it to bits and put it back together. Um, and I think it was kind of, what's the, uh, I got given it for Christmas. My parents brought it for 300 pounds or 200 pounds. So not, not a huge amount back in the day. It was in 1995, so I'm okay. showing my age. Um, but I used to take everything to bits at home. So what I mean is juices, televisions. I wanted to work out, work out how, it was, uh, how it worked. And the reason why I did that was because I'm dyslexic, so I'm not, I'm not the biggest reader. I'm not the biggest um, writer. So I learn with my hands. So I learned on engines and I learned how to take things to bits. 
not always putting it back together. I will say to you is that Brightling Avatime has been back to Brightling probably about 10, 15 times. And this, um, during COVID, I was teaching my son how to, and I used the same watch. Mm. Um, but I had a pen knife and a glass of screwdriver and a pair of, um, I, I, I can't remember. The, anyway, I, it was very rudimental on a towel in my bedroom. So that was that was kind of and and there was a few pit, bits still the left. The custom there. ones are actually made properly. I hasten to add in a workshop without a towel and with yeah, tools. No, no, no. Uh, yes, and my watchmakers still take the the piss out of me on this because <laughs> I, I've seen that watch. It's still in pieces forty years later. Well, no, it has been back to Brightling. They put another glass yeah. dome on it. I did break the glass dome. Of course you did. Of course you did with the towel. And well, well, almost. and I love that. That's the story because you have that. Again, I mean, that's your history. That sort of was, was whatever flipped in your head that you felt like this is something I potentially would like to do. It was the light bulb moment. Okay. And, and the other thing is, so when you see here, you, um, I, we were, uh, I was very lucky, thank you, Nick, for GPHG, but we, um, we voted on um, a clock that you make yourself. And for me, that brought me back to that's my lovely. childhood and said, boom, that's, that's what I want. And I, I wished it was out during COVID because I, I would have been like, I would have stacked them up like this and gone, hey, because I think that is this idea of something that you go, oh my God, I, I want to understand more about that world. But the second part of that question was, how would you change can I just, Again, can you're, I just, you're Can I just answer, oh, yes, answer the question on, on George's behalf? I think what he <laughs> means when he says that he would like to do the Navitimer is that he would actually like to have a go at the IWC engineer. I think that's what you meant to say, George. I mean, I, I know you get a bit mixed up with the word sometimes, so I think that's actually what you meant. Very similar Brightling IWC, it sounds the same, George Kern. I mean, it's easily mistaken. Because I think that you would do a bang-up job with the engineer, and i tell you why. Because that watch designed by a great man, as we know, but also has been in and out of production. So in a way, that kind of bloodline has been severed. So while I would not necessarily advocate that you take a towel to um, a Patek Nautilus or something like that. I'm not going to live that down, am I? No, you're really not. The towel manufacturer, I think he might have some towels to sell you if you want as well later. I but, think, um, I think, but, think no, but Balenciaga I, I, has done something with a towel. But <laughs> I think, but uh, you could actually, that's a thought, custom <laughs> towels. Let's, let's come back to that. Do you um, those but, already? I thought you had those already. No, but, I, but I genuinely think that you would do a smashing job with that watch because what, what you did with that aqua racer, and I mean, just with new materials, not new materials, but different materials, not, and this is, this is where you need taste. I mean, taste is both a, a subjective and an absolute quality. I mean, it's like bad taste is sort of a radiator that looks like the Eiffel Tower because it doesn't need to look like the Eiffel Tower. Do you know what I mean? So it's technically bad taste. I probably have one because it's kitsch and I've got no taste. But um, I'd have I it with, with a stuffed crocodile on it as well. But um, I think, the, I think the, that engineer could... I think what you would do with that would be fascinating because you've had this great experience now across all sorts of different brands that to, to, to tackle a masterpiece, but a masterpiece that has already, it's not, it, it, it's, do you know what I mean? There's been enough of a disconnect from the, from the, original, from the original for you to step in and, you know, do wow. something. Nick, I'm, I'm, I'm purely humbled. I'm, I really am humbled. Oh, don't be so English. No, Ugh. but I am. I'd, look, I would say to you... I'm very so, grateful that you're saying so, you're humbled, George. I'm humbled <laughs> by your humility, really. No, no, but, I, but, I, but I'd also say to you is I absolutely <laughs> love the engineer, and it is one of those... I, I agree with you uh, totally on all points. I agree with you in total. Uh, no, um, Barbara's having her work cut out here, and she can't see. She had her eyes replaced. <laughs> I was telling it, it, it all starts. It all starts at this age. She's. I, I he warned me. He's going to throw I that in. By the I, way. I had my. I had my corneas grafted. By the way, so. Um, so I know what it's like. But anyway, back to back to back to agreeing with each other, George. Definitely, I agree with you. I can agree. you please answer the second part of my question? What change would you make to the Navitimer? Oh. How would you customize it? Th that's the thing. Is I haven't. I haven't even opened up that Pandora's box yet because. Unless I'm allowed to. Ten of worms. We've got to think of some more cliches. I've already used Pandora. What would, what would be, you, you're, the, you're, the, you're the queen of these things. I, I can't us. see, so I have no idea. No, you can't see, of yeah. course. No. So I can't, it's affecting my hearing. <laughs> I, look, honestly, when I look at it, I'm, firstly, what Nick says about the engineer, I, I, when it came out, I was like, hell yes. The new engineer came out, and I was like, this is absolutely amazing. So mm -hmm. for me, on, on that, I was like, 
when Nick said that, I was like, what, really? Um, the Brightling Avatimer, I, I love the Brightling Avatimer. I love the different um, iterations of it. But I, I don't know. I, I, that's where... Like a four-date dial. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Something the thing crazy. is, when you look at new materials, you look at where things could go. Right. You also look at where product is going at the moment. You know, you look at the Navitimer, it is such a kind of a kick-ass watch because it's one of the icons. See, uh, I, I, would, I would be more reticent about letting you loose on the Navitimer. I, I, I knew you would. Because it's, it's a thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I, I think also you have... Well, I've written an article, I think it's in tomorrow's Financial Times, about the Dubai editions. And there's some genuinely inventive things. I mean, it's, it's not just the Hindi Arabic numerals. I mean, there is um, a, a Hublot with some calligraphy on it that is calligraphy that is colored, but is also super luminova. Now, that is imaginative, it's interesting, and it's also within the kind of purview of what I see Hublot as, because Hublot is a brand of limited editions, but limited in a good way, not in the way that Panerai used to be a brand of limited editions that were more numerous than the actual main production, limited edition of as many as you could sell and then a few thousand more. Um, but, but that is something that it is, you know, it's not, it's not actually customizing it because it's a customization brand almost, you know? So it's a more nuanced question than you're trying. You're trying to make no, this no, kind no, of. No, no, you're trying I, to make this into a sort of Punch and Judy show. When I actually, don't want. I'm only doing what I was asked to do, which is <laughs> um, moderate a debate. But the thing is, like, until you get into a design or a design process, mm. you know, the thing is, for me, it's even like the music, the whole thing. They, you know, it becomes part and parcel. It's like, how does the advertising look for it? How does... So, for me, that's what... And the box. You do great boxes. I, 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 no, but I love packaging because I think for myself is, there's a, a, a saying that I've been saying multiple times since I've been in Japan. It was the only thing I learned in Japan. Uh, it was Doki Doki. And um, that is... Uh, is, that, is that when they do clothes for pets? And they do little prams for doggy doggy? <laughs> no, uh, this, is, this is about, and I, I think everyone will probably connect with this, is when you see something, uh, an inanimate object, or something that you fall in love with, and you go, my God, I need that. I used to always say it's got to want to steal it. But I think in this modern day, we're living in London, you don't say that anymore. So it's doggy doggy is this idea of your heart beating a bit faster into the, I want that in my life. Mm. And so that's for me where I look at something like this is how do we create that doki doki on anything? How do we create that kind of atmosphere that then you go, oh wow, I love that. I love that. Well, I'm going to kick a fifth question to you. Oh no. Oh, I can't wait to hear the answer to this one. Have you ever turned a customer away because you felt the changes they wanted to make to their watch were just too insane for you to do? Um, yes, multiple times. Very good, very please, glad to hear it. Um, please but, explain. But I will, I, I'm going to explain one thing. And I had a very great customer of mine, um, wasn't at the beginning, and he wanted two colors. It was this wonderful bright pink and our Bamford Aqua Blue on the dial of watch. And it just, did, it was one of those things where I went, this doesn't, it didn't work together. And I kept on going back to him and I was like, and at the point Your he just went. Your suit is pink and blue. No, it's, it, oh, oh, okay, well, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, it was great on a suit, but wrong on a watch. And that's what George <laughs> means. I mean, you could eat some components and you could puke a better watch. Do you know what I mean? Well, no, so this is the interesting thing. So I, I went to him and I kept on saying, hey, and at the point, he, 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 I heard him on the phone, he just slammed his head on the thing, he said, make my effing watch. And I was just like, oh my, okay, fine. No, but so I can I, sell you a used Australian no, or so a tractor. I, or so, I, <laughs> so I did it, I did it, I did the watch for him and I showed it to him and I, and I was, and when he arrived in, I was like, oh my God, what the hell? And he gave me his business card, and one side was pink, one side was blue. Uh -huh. And I went, okay, and he said to me, he said, you could have a photograph of this watch on your wall just to know that the customer is always right. Now, there is some times where I, I don't agree. There has been one or two people's faces that shouldn't be on a watch. There's been um, some other things that um, people have been in certain ways um, or in different... Um, uh, maybe narcotics that I was like, no way, you know, the, I, I think there were certain things that I would never put on a watch. Um, and, and so there's always one of those things where I'm like going, no. Uh, and, and the other thing is with, you know, the brands that I work with, it is very much, you know, we, we show them what we're doing. 
So there is not this whole thing of like, oh, you know, they know they're part and parcel of, of what we're doing. So we don't cross over their colorways. We don't cross over their designs. So there is, a, there is quite a lot of um, toing and froing is probably the easiest way. But I do say no to certain people. Really? Um, but I, may, uh, yeah, there was also someone's dog that wanted to go on a dial that I just went, that just, it just, and I, you know, so we put it on the back. We did a wonderful engraving on the back. Uh, no, well, I, I, I do put Snoopy on the dial, so I like Snoopy. Yeah, so, so for me, I like a dog on the dial, but just didn't work. It was, it, it, and also, it was one of those that probably would have turned up as, you know, it, it had a uh, had kind of. Do you of think a, it would have tainted your reputation if that was posted on like social media somewhere? If you did do, let's say, the no, dog on the dial, no, not, or not at all. It's more. I just don't. Sometimes I go, it doesn't work, mm. and or I just go. It but just, is that not opinion? It, it, it's to, this is the customer. When the customer said, I'm right, I, I, there is sometimes when you go, yes, I'm right. But, you know, as Nick just said about swatches for suits and things like that, you know, I, like this. When I first saw it, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is a bit kind of... And, and then I was like, actually, no, I love this. I love this colorway. But it, it took me probably the whole of the summer to really get into, actually, I love this where I, I love just single seersuckers. So that's what I'm saying to you is sometimes it's, it, and, and you know, the customer is always right. You know, I have- Except when they're wrong. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, but I have a card that says, you can get on without us, we can't get on without you. And that is one of the big things is we have to offer certain things. And, and maybe there is a navigation through. There's, there's pink and aqua blue. It's still not the one I love, but I do have a photograph in my office of it purposely, and it's actually opposite my desk, just to prove that. You put it on the wall when the guy comes round, and then sort of turn it. No, over. no, no. It, it it sits. There's a there's a um, in my office. And most people don't see in my office, but it's got all of our clients on the wall, and I, I and this photograph is there because it says this is what is part and parcel of it. Nick. Would you like to respond oh, to what? I agree totally George? with everything you said. But, 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 but what, I mean, uh, I think what it comes down to is experience Do you and think guidance. he's right in turning yes, people away? Yes, of course he's right. <laughs> or, or wrong. I mean, whatever you want. But I mean, I think he's right. George is pretty much always right because it's essentially what George does. And I mean, if he thinks it's, I mean, it's like if I went to my tailor and said I wanted double but single breasted, I wanted, I wanted five but six buttons here and then seven buttons here and then maybe this leg, this leg made into a pair of shorts scallop. and this, this leg made into a pair of flares. He'd say, probably not. You know, I mean, and I have said that. I went in with exactly that request only last <laughs> week and he, said, he turned me down. Um, I mean, and he'd be sensible to do so because I'd be walking around and people would say, who's your tailor? And I'd give him a name and say, and they'd say well, he's crap because he'd let, you, he'd let you walk out looking like a complete tool. Now, um, I mean, I can do that without my tailor's help, by the way. <laughs> Definitely not, Nick. George, any um, rebuttal? Look, I, I, uh, I... You agree? I totally agree. I totally and utterly agree. Um, but I will also say is we, we did things that, you know, were unreal because they were this thing about bespoke. It's, mm. it's those things that I, you know, I'm very lucky with the projects that we've got to do. And that's, that's the other side, this other side to it is, you know, the tailor, every time that Nick or, I hope not me, but when Nick comes there, it's like, this is going to be amazing because he's going to ask for something that's going to push that boundary, you know, or go back in history and find a, a unique cloth. And that's what I love, is I love this discovery. Well done. You, All right. you need experience. It's, it's about, I mean, you're at the top of your game because you've been doing this for 20 odd years. You started off painting stripes onto iPods. Yes. I mean, let's tell you how long ago the iPod, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, was a device that looked like an iPod telephone but only played music. <laughs> I, I love those days. Yeah, we, we worked with a, an amazing brand and we, we did customization of iPods. I mean, that was kind of my, um, my I, I, you know, yes, 20 years ago. I, more, I, more, more, uh, no, more, I'm, more. No, I'm not. More, but, more, but, more. but the thing is, what's happened is longevity. You know, uh, someone said to me, if your life was in reverse, could you imagine the grief that you would have and all the things that would be behind you because of the sorrows and all the things that, and you'd come all the way through to, and I think when you're growing older, the scars internally and externally, for me, that is, 
but it's also the knowledge. The knowledge of kind of understanding, as you said, knowledge. That, for me, is one of the greatest things ahead of us, is the knowledge that we've got behind us and taking me to this oh, point right is, now. I'm not going that, deep and meaningful. The journalist in the room, the quote that. The that is behind us is in front of us and also to the left and to the right. <laughs> well, to up and Nick, down. Nick, you are to my left. Below us. Um, no, I mean, I, I do think it's, it's about... You know what works and what doesn't work by now without... And, I mean, if somebody needs to ask you why doesn't it work, you can, you can, you can actually say F off. I mean, I would, you probably wouldn't. Because I, 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 I I've, got less, I've got less time left than you, so I've got to, I've got to get my skates on a bit. So if, if I say they need an explanation, I say go, go and find somebody else, you know. If you, do, if you want what I do, I'm here to do it. But there's a reason why I don't do the other stuff. Probably because I, I, either I can't do it as well, or I don't like doing it, or I don't think it would suit. I think it would be wrong. And I mean, I think that people can come to you with confidence because... You do turn people down if it's the wrong thing. It'll make them look bad. It'll make you look bad. It will make also the watch look bad. And the idea of customization is that the watch should look better. It should mean more rather than being a laughing stock. Nick, I totally agree. Uh, the other thing is I've got to blame Nick for uh, quite a few things. One of them is my weird and wonderful obsession with weird and wonderful watches is because of Nick. He has taken me on an amazing... Uh, th this is the thing is that when throughout my life I've had... N Nick has been a part of my life for the 20 years almost. I mean, the first time we met... And he is, every time, I'm, I, I'm like this magpie. I look at his watches, I look at his rings, I look at... And it is one of those things that I, I look at it and, and think, you know, we don't all have to be the same. And going back to your original question of, of you know, about this individuality and, and is it a good thing or a bad thing, for me, I look at it and I think, we are, we're individuals and we I want to project it's an, that. It's an, it's an inevitability. Being in, individuality is inevitable. I mean, if you look around the room... It, it is inevitable, and I think that that can be expressed because one of the things about the, the old watches that I like and the old watches that I put you onto is that if you look, if you look long enough, you'll you'll probably find what you had in mind anyway. Someone will have done it already. So I think there's there's not a it's not something that it's that it's the arrogance of us that we think that we know better because we're living in 2023. Well, somebody could have done it already in 1973 or in 1873 or 1773. I mean, like that, like that Van Cleef, the, not this year, last year. You remember the one with the, with the birds clattering oh. around the thing? That was, that was the kind of object that they would have had in sort of a Byzantine court. And it, and it was... Mesmerising. And, and they weren't pretending it was anything new, but they were just... People were blown away by something that was effectively the kind of object that would have been a status-conferring piece in 500 years ago. Yeah. No. I love that. Mm -hmm. Last question is going to go to Nick, uh, and then we are going to, we'll have about 10 minutes left to open up the floor for Q&A. Q &A. Mr. Folks, has George ever customized a watch for you? And if not, would you ever let him work his magic on one of your existing timepieces? He's Ooh. customized, he customized a watch for me. There was, I was very young at the time and I really didn't know what I was doing and I was, <laughs> I, I, I was lost. I was, uh, it, was, it was a period in my life, ladies and gentlemen, that I don't like to allude to now, but it was when I needed the guidance of a, of a man who could also sell me a tractor in a used Australian. Oh. And, no, he has, he has, he has. He has and he did, and to be fair, it is, actually something that I'm still very proud of because it was the Monza in gold and it's already I, I love cushion cases I mean I love the Patek 5020 it's my dream watch but I'm never going to be able to afford the 5020 so a cushion case watch by a known maker but I felt it could I, I felt it could have been improved on the dial and I felt that improvement would have been a brown dial because I've seen a brown dial 5020 and that's what I mean about it, but, it, but it's not a kind of attempt to have a 5020. It's a Monza, which is different. So yes, is the is the short answer. That was the longer answer I gave you before. No, but, I'm glad you explained which one it was. Do you? Uh, how long ago, I, I, January, I loved did you, that did you watch that? because, uh, to the point, when you did that watch, it was another uh, uh, because it came with this wonderful silver, uh, silvery gold dial, and and it was one of those or champagne dial, and and it just. With that chocolate dial, it made me go out and buy another gold Monza 
and now it, it's on my wife's wrist because it is one of those things. You inspired me on that. You did a fully individual. I had to do something different, of course, but it is one of those watches that the Monza is such an amazing thing. And, and so doing that, I, I remember that project. I remember going through with you on what you wanted and how you wanted it. And, and I, was, I was literally... I was in the back seat of the car following you. I, it, it was just amazing because you said, this is what I want, this is how... And, I, I, and it was amazing because that, for me, is what I talked about, you know, looking back. And uh, that informed me of where I go. You know, I would love to see not... I wouldn't... I think the watches that Nick has in his collection, I wouldn't... Honestly, I wouldn't touch one of them. But what I would love to do, and I'd love to see at some point... Could you imagine Nick's collection, you know, today? It could it go on other watches. It would just be amazing, because you think about colours, you think about design, you think about cloth materials, all those things to come about. You know, the watches that we get to... I mean, that was one of the most magical things, is that GPHG picking these watches up, feeling them, touching them, and seeing the depths of these dials, and it was inspirational. And I, I would imagine, you know, Nick and I together, it, it would be magic, it would be amazing. But anyway, that's, that's a side I agree, note. of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be, it would be good. And I mean, I think, but it, it comes from knowing what you're doing, George, and you happily enough know what you're doing. But there's some people who just think that to black it up and cut a bit out the middle is enough, and it isn't really. Thank you, Nick. Wow. Well, let's give them a round of applause before we, uh, we open up the floor. Thank you both, gentlemen. That went swimmingly, I thought. And give you a round oh, of applause for you. doing such a sterling thank job you. at making it work. I can't see, but and, I shall thank you. And also, I'm sorry we didn't argue as well. I, 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 I know you were like, hey, I want, I want the punch and you, and I was like, I was like, oh, I never okay. said that I said, I just said, said it's a debate. Your exact words, you say, I want there to be punch and Judy and blood. Punch. Those were exact no. words. <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, I was like, I how can you put two down? bricks I mean, together? We do have another debate tomorrow. Maybe that one will go that way. Um, show of hands, if anybody has a uh, gentleman behind Miguel, please. And I'm sorry, I cannot see you, so I'm sorry. I have a question for George. Uh, I'm a big time fan of uh, About F in Time. So my question is, do you see watch customization going in the direction of automobile customization where you could take your Mercedes, give it to Brabus, and then they up the horsepower, they change the exhaust, they make it uh, in a way what it was not beginning from the factory? So could I bring a Rolex to you and say put a Turbion in it or... I would, do you, I, do you do comp I, can you I add understand. complications? I understand that's what you're question. saying. I, I don't, I don't customise the movements uh, because that's the heart of the watch. Um, I, I believe that when you look at the heart, it's, it's one of those things. It's a ticking thing. That that's. I, I do external. Um, I do internal on the dial, the hands, and customization on that. That for me is my world. I think adding those movements to it. I don't know. I, 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 it's just how I feel. I don't, I, I don't do it. It's not my wheelhouse. It's also, you have to be a master in that field. If you're going to say tourbillons, you look at the masters here on movements. There is amazing movements that are just mesmerizing. And I'm, I'm going, how do they do that? You look at, I, I, you know, Nick can say multiple movements on this, but that for me is something I, I wouldn't do because... I, I look at it, you're talking about Brabus, I totally love what Brabus does, but it, it is taking something that's a known entity of an engine and adding more horsepower and more things to it. I, for me, adding tourbillons and things like that, it is very much, it's a master skill on that. I think I've got master skills, but that is not, it's also, I don't have the best on um, gem setting, I don't, so I know my, my wheelhouse that I sit in, because it's, it's things that I know I love. So that's the personal touch. When we were saying things that I would say no to, if someone came to me and said, oh, I want to do this, I would talk to the brand, say, have you got the movement? Or I would talk to the company that makes the movement, and I would say, can you make something for this? And then we'd maybe go through. Because I think to myself is these movements are just, and they're bulletproof. Most brands' movements are bulletproof. So I hope that's answered your question. Good question. Yeah, thank you very much. We have another question. Uh, James Dowling. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, James. Another person that feeds my addiction on weird watches. 
He's he's debating tomorrow. You oh go. no! I, but no, no. he does feed my addiction on uh, watches. Do you want my mic? There we go. Um, thank you, George. Thank you, Nick. But this question is for Barbara. Oh God, he always does this. Oh good. Um, next year when the Nikki and Georgie Baby Love Fest goes on the road to North of England working men's clubs. What's your role? <laughs> if you fly, I'm there, baby. If you fly me out, I'll go. I'll go. You're you live nuts. in... You have, you have, I'm, sure, I'm sure you have access to the North of England, don't you, George? <laughs> Where? <laughs> to the no. North of England. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miguel has been patiently waiting. Hello? Here. Oh. Okay, okay. That's okay. So this is a subject I love. We could go on forever. But I've got a very interesting uh, question for you because you mentioned you, you wouldn't touch the movements, but actually you did to a uh, uh, Hoyer chronograph what Hoyer hasn't been able to do because they have this historic bicompax configuration and now they have the movement with the small seconds at six. So you, you change it to make so it more respectful of Hoyer's heritage. So I'd like you to tell me about it. So and that also. was with the support. So um, even on this, there's no date. Um, and we're buying the parts from their service team. We're, we're going in with them. We're saying, this is what we're deleting. This is what we're doing. We select. So it's a stem change on that. And it's, it's an eradication of that. The, the date wheel, um, it was how, because when you pull it out, we had to make sure that everything works. But it was with them. Okay. This is the great thing is I have got a Goliath behind me of amazing brands. So you go and talk to their guys that love movements, and they will go, Oh yeah, we designed it to do this, 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 this. I'm like going, hell yeah. I don't need to kind of like go, oh, you know, I want to do, it's like, they're just like, hey, this is amazing. I mean, the new, this is, I'm, I, and I will say, I'm obsessed with movement, so, it, but the new glass box movement, unreal. I mean, when you look at that movement, what it's got below it, this is, this, you, you love strap hacking, I love strap hacking. That's a movement hacker. I mean, like literally, I can't wait to see what they're going to bring on that. Yes. So that, for me, is where I'd say to you is, with these brands behind me, it, you can make magic, but that's with them. Yeah, but then they have the ghost small second counter, which is, which is something that I hate. You're being more respectful towards yeah, so, the so, heritage so, than themselves. Yeah. And I also would like you to share your experience, or former experience, when you used to uh, customize Rolexes. How did you cope with Rolex pressure, and uh, how did it go? Wow, that's a hard question. Um, uh, what, I, what I'd say is um, it is absolutely amazing being up here on the stage. Um, and um, I, 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 you know, it was actually um, uh, someone said to me, he said, you know, you can either be, um, you know, in the shade or you can be in the sun. And it is a totally different scenario now. I stand here eight years deep on, or nine years, or eight years deep on where I, I am as a business. I would never have thought, you know, to be standing here, I'd never have thought to be standing next to Nick at GPHC. I would never think of these things. And, you know, every time I think, wow. So you're saying the difference of before and after. I wouldn't say on any, any side. I, I would say you, I needed to, you know, the past, is the past, but it takes me to standing right here today. So I never look back at it and go, oh my God, that was dreadful, or this was, you know, that's the roller coaster of life. But I'm standing right here today with two amazing people that I look up to standing on stage with me next to me. That, I can't, you know, that's an amazing thing. So that's, that's the difference. Is that all right? Two more questions. Gentleman in the back. And then is the Mohican, wonderful man. Thank you, George and Nick. Uh, just in the future, do you see more Bamfords coming up? And would you encourage that? Or are, is the watch industry, as insiders, are you guys happy with one Bamford, one customization partner for all of the brands? Or would you want more creativity to flow into this field? Um, not like a chimpanzee you know, doing the customization, but somebody who knows his craft and you know, getting along with the brands, or maybe at customer request as well. Nick, what do you think? I agree completely with whatever's <laughs> being said. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I think 
it doesn't, you're an overnight success, it's only taken you 25 years to get here. So I don't, it's not something that you can just turn the key and start. It's about relationships, it's about a level of taste, it's about a level of also technical, technical ability, technical feasibility. And I think you've got to understand what it is you're doing. I mean, if there, if there are other customizers out there, and also you've got to go legitimate. I mean, I think that that's George's big point is that he was doing something before that wouldn't have enabled him to be part of the industry. And because he's part of the industry, he's able to get more done because he has access to more stuff. So there are other customizers out there, obviously, but they're, op they're, they're operating sub rosa. And, and, and therefore, it's always going to be something that isn't what you're doing. Uh, wow. So just kind of adding to that, would, would the industry then prefer to have, or are there interest uh, barriers to entry in, in this case? I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask them. I, I, I've, got, I've got no idea. I mean, I, I think it's often, if there is a supplier who's successful, there's probably a reason why that supplier is successful. Um, and it might be a reason why there aren't any challenges that, that I know of at the moment. I, I mean, if, if they're doing a good enough job and if they can operate I mean, it's, it's like supplying, you know, springs or something like this. You, you, you become an expert in that. And I mean, I don't mean to demean what you say, but you are, you are an industry supplier. And I, I see exactly the same. I, I totally agree. Okay. Um, just on, on that um, one thing, I, I, I would say to you is I think there will be, I think, but the other thing is I, I, I came to the reality probably about eight years ago um, that I could be, um, and I, 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 I'm, I used to be a photographer. So I used to be, I studied photography, that was my world. And the story about Kodak and the digital revolution, and I was part of the digital revolution, so I'm really showing my age. But I always thought there was a point where Kodak, and we all know this, that um, you know, they were the digital camera operators. They were the, they were the, they were the gangsters of this, this uh, you know, and that disappeared. And I, I just always think to myself is, the industry, the brands will do personalization. And they, 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 there will be something there. You've, we've already heard Piaget, 1965, uh, Piaget doing personalization. A lot of brands do it. There's, you know, I, I, I know of a hell of a lot of brands that do it. So to bring that to the forefront, Either I become obsolete or I, or I have to kind of be a part of it. So I, I think that's where I sit on this. Is, and I'm only as good as the thing that I'm producing today. I'm, I, and that's, so you have to up your game every single time. So I, I hope, you know, because, it, because there will always be something. But, but the brands themselves are doing stuff. So that's my thing on that. One last quick, quick, quick question, Mr. Mastin Frost. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so, uh, oh. can you hear me? Anybody home? Is this thing on? There we go. Um, Nick, you've talked about like, the, the broader understanding of like a sense of style or a sense of taste and so on. Do you think that, like the, the way you've been speaking, do you think that that broadly understood sense of taste supersedes uh, personal happiness. Because when you talk about customization this way and someone wanting, you know, what many of us may view as a horrible color combination, it's what they want, it's going to bring them joy. Like, there's, there's like, a difference that line? between bespeaking something and having a customized object. And I think if you're going for a customized object, which is what you do, um, you you, you're already buying into there being an aspect, a fundamental aspect of that object that you actually already, a, a level of taste about it that you actually appreciate already. Um, and then the customizer will interpret your desire for character on that piece and use that as a canvas upon which to paint this sort of biographical sketch, if you like. Um, the broader question of taste I mean, it, I, I believe that there is an absolute quality in that it needs to be fitting, but, on, but essentially taste non, non est disputandum, de gustibus non est disputandum. I mean, it's, it's something that you can't actually, when it gets down to it, the, the argument becomes, 
I like it. And there's, that's the, you know, if, if, if you had to have a debate like that, it'd be a very short debate, because I like it, well, I don't. Well, that's it. Okay, questions. <laughs> We're good? Thank you very thank, much for coming. Thank you, thank you so Dubai much. Watch me for having us. Barbara, thank you. Oh, no, thank you, guys. <laughs>